Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of HubSpot's Inbound Now. I'm your host, David Wells, and with me today is a very special guest, Mr. Aaron Strout. Welcome to the show, Aaron. Hey, thanks for having me, David. No problem, no problem. Aaron is the head of location-based marketing at WCG in Austin. Um, he is the author of an, an upcoming book, Location-Based Marketing for Dummies. Um, he runs his own uh, podcast, the Quick and Dirty Social Media Podcast on Blog Talk Radio, and he blogs over at his own site, uh, stroutmeister.com. And I wanted to get you on the show today, Aaron, to talk all about location-based marketing. Sound good? Well, good. You've You've come to the right guy. <laughs> I love I my location-based marketing. I figured that was yes. the case. Cool. So, so basically, you know, since Foursquare launched back in '09 at South by Southwest, you know, how has the location-based uh, marketing landscape kind of changed and evolved? Yeah, actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to rewind even a little bit further back to that, which is more like 07 when I started to use location-based services. There was a service called BrightKite, and there were a few of us geeks, uh, people like Doug Haslam and Brian Person and Chris Brogan, and uh, we were using them checking into social media events so we could kind of find one another. Uh, and we'd also, I used it a lot for a photo blog, and at that point, it was really just one of these cool things. It was fun. Knew that there was some legs to it, but couldn't quite see the business use. I think in 09, what was exciting was when Foursquare came out. For folks that aren't that familiar with their history, they had actually been around since 2001 when Dennis uh, Crowley, who's the CEO, had taken his um, NYU thesis and had turned it into a business called Dodgeball. Well, this company out in the valley, little search company called Google bought them, <laughs> couldn't quite figure out what they wanted to do with them. Uh, I want to say they bought them in 07 and then spun them off in 09. Uh, they came out of the gate, I think, with an eye toward how can we use this for business. And even though at the beginning it wasn't really a it wasn't something that I think too many people paid attention to. People did realize that you could check into businesses and that there were some businesses that were actually setting up their locations. And the real key was uh, some of the businesses that took advantage of the offer functionality as that came along started to get people intrigued, right? Ben and Jerry's uh, from New England was one of those companies that did the three scoops of ice cream for three bucks. Right. Really straightforward. All you had to do is check in. If you were the mayor, you get an extra scoop for free. Um, so I think, you know, it was probably... Uh, about a year after they launched where businesses really started to figure out that maybe there was some there there. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so since then, I mean, it's, it's expanded like Yelp's in the game now, Facebook, Gawala, there's all these different companies, right? There, there doesn't seem to be a shortage. Do you see kind of moving into the future, some acquisitions or consolidation there, or do you think it's kind of a, still a free for all? Yeah, I think we'll probably see a little more development before we see too much more consolidation and acquisition. Although, uh, if you remember three or four months ago, or maybe it was five or six months ago now, we had eBay acquire Ware, which is up in your uh, local Boston. And we had another company called Groupon, which folks may have heard of, that acquired a company called Whirl out of Seattle. And so there has been some of this acquisition. And in writing the book, uh, Ware definitely came into play. Whirl was one of the six or seven that we had recommended recommended companies keeping an eye on. So that threw a little bit of a wrinkle and had to go back and kind of edit some of that stuff out. Um, Groupon does promise to reintroduce a new version of World sometime in the future. And the nice thing is they did take Jeff Holden, who's the CEO. Jeff was also one of the guys that had originally um, built the collaborative filtering functionality back when he was at Amazon. So Jeff is a smart guy. He's their new VP of product. But uh, I absolutely do see it consolidating, but I think we're going to see more before we see less. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so what about like in terms of you know businesses adopting these you know location-based marketing platforms to drive you know foot traffic into their their business? Do you, do you think we've hit critical mass, or there's still a long way to go for this to kind of be, become more mainstream? Yeah, David, I was mentioning this to someone the other day that if you think about this as being a journey um, and making it analogous to you or I going on vacation, the wheels of the airplane have just touched down on the tarmac, and so you are at the very, very beginning point of how this is going to work. I think there are a few things that are going on that are big, right? So those two acquisitions were significant in the fact that 
you had some big companies in eBay and Groupon saying, we see some value in this. And then you've seen some deals recently. The most notable, I think, is American Express partnering up with Foursquare and offering a deal that is really quite a compelling deal, right? So if you're a merchant and you sort of enter into this program, that people who come in and use their um, Amex card get checked in and get uh, take advantage of the deal as long as you've connected your Amex account with your um, Foursquare account. So, and now we have the president, uh, Obama, like him or not, but he's using Foursquare. So, you know, you're starting to get some serious uptake, but we have a long way to go before I think businesses really start to take this too, too seriously. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so is there a, a benefit then uh, of becoming an early adopter of these location-based marketing services? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's interesting because we're having this conversation with um, Google Plus right now and Scott Monty, who I think you're probably friendly with and, and I'm friendly with as well over at Ford, has the advantage of being one of the companies that, one of two companies really, that's been allowed into Google Plus. They get to do a lot of things and experiment and learn on the fly and they get the benefit of the doubt. So I think companies that you still have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, it's starting to get a little bit later in the game with places like Foursquare, uh, where you have had probably, I don't know, 100 different big brands sign up and do some experimentation. But you get a little bit more wiggle room, right? Versus, let's look at Facebook or Twitter. Um, they're semi-mature social media channels. One's got almost 700 million users. The other's got 200 million. If a company goes in, especially a big company, and screws up now, it's a very visible thing. You end up on the front page of Ad Age or the front page of USA right. Today or Wall Street Journal. And I think with the location-based things, it's not to say that if you make a mistake, it won't get some uh, notice. But I think both customers and the press uh, and social media in general are willing to cut you more slack if you're going in and, and playing around with them. Um, Instagram is one of those right now. It's one of my favorite services. It's a photo sharing service. Right, it sits right. on top of Foursquare. But there are 5 million people that are there already. But I've noticed a lot of brands starting to adopt it. And I love the fact that brands are starting to adopt it. And I am willing personally to give them a wide berth because I'm like, hey, it's cool that you're here and you're hanging out and you're posting pictures and going in and liking other people's pictures. So I think, you know, I, I may not be the perfect use case, but there are a lot of people that think that way. Right, right. So it's it's them jumping in and people being accepting because they're trying something new, try, you know, engaging in the uh, you know community there. So I, I think that's a, a valid point there. But so so with companies in, you know, doing location based marketing right now. You know, what are some of the key components on building a successful campaign that you've seen? I never thought you'd ask. Uh, <laughs> this is one of the things that we cover in depth in the book. And um, if I haven't mentioned him yet, I would like to mention Schneider Mike, or Mike Schneider is his uh, official name, but Schneider Mike is his sort of Ronaldinho or, uh, you know, his handle that he uses everywhere. Um, we like to have what we call the five golden rules, right? So the essence is to make sure you're going out and exploring right now. There are five or six major services, and I think you mentioned most of them, Yelp, Facebook Places, Foursquare, Gowalla, Scavenger. Uh, there's a new one that I'm introducing in the it's called Local Response, and they don't actually really run on their own platform. They leverage Twitter and sort of scrape in other check-ins from other services. But um, that's one is explore the services, get set up on a lot of them. You know, even if you're not going to use them, make sure you go in and claim your location so that someone else doesn't box you out uh, or that you, there's not fraudulent activity there. The second is to make sure that <clears throat> you go in and you start to embrace some of the influencers that have been checking in. And, you know, you want to pick one or two services that's right for you and probably Foursquare, um, maybe Facebook places, maybe where if you're a small bit. I mean, I'm sorry, um, Yelp is, is a good place to look. And then once you do that, start thinking about an offer and making sure an offer syncs up with what are your business goals? What are you trying to accomplish? Is it to drive loyalty? Is it to drive engagement? Is it to increase you know, foot traffic or sales? Um, knowing what your goal is and matching that up with an offer, which by the way, doesn't have to be a monetary offer. It could be experiential, right? Come in and do a coffee tasting with the, the manager or uh, come in and meet the VP of technology and you know do a blogging session over lunch. It could be recognition, you know, getting their p name and poster up on the wall. That goes a long way with some people. Right. Um, the, the fourth is making sure that, you know, you're testing and learning and optimizing and, and measuring what you need to do to really do any of those three. And then the last is what we call operationalize. And that is making sure that if you do decide to set up an offer and you are running a program, 
that you've got everybody trained that needs to be trained, right? So that you don't get that deer in the headlights look when someone gets that offer, is all excited, holds up their phone and shows it to the manager, the owner, the wait staff, and they kind of look at them like, what the hell is that? Yeah, I see it's your phone, right? Uh, but then they understand what the purpose is because there's nothing that's more of a turnoff than not understanding that. Right, right. So, so one of the, the points that you touched on there is like uh, businesses building a loyalty program with these location-based services, right? It's almost like a free or cheap way to do that. Um, have you seen some really cool examples of companies using these location-based services to build up a, a loyalty program? Yeah, so um, our, the forward author of our book, B.J. Emerson, has been doing this for a couple of years now with his company, Tasty Delight. Tasty Delight is a fairly major food chain. And so they've got a loyalty program where you can attach your Foursquare account, Twitter, and Facebook, and literally through the swipe of a card, all of a sudden you can check into those. The benefit is, is that you actually get additional points for checking in. Starwood has started to do this. Now they've got an existing loyalty program, but they're building on it where if you attach your Starwood account with Foursquare and check in, I was just out in LA, you get an extra 150 points for checking in. Um, there's another service called Top Guest that does something similar, and you get credit not only for checking in, but for posting pictures and things like that. Um, I've seen you know other local companies, so I'm in Austin, right? There's a company called The Hideout Theater, and it's got a coffee shop downstairs. The theater is smart where they don't just benefit you for the first time you check in or if you're the mayor, but it's basically, I think it's the first, fifth, and tenth time you get a two-for-one ticket, and the mayor gets half price off you know, all the time. And right. so... Uh, and, and I think that goes into perpetuity, right? So every sort of fifth time you go, you're getting this extra uh, sort of benefit. And smart companies will start to think about, how do I do that? And then lastly, Level Up, which uh, is a new sort of offering by Scavenger, uh, is a payment system. And Mike actually did a video on this the other day, which is pretty cool, on his um, Tech Interruption series, where you can go in and pay, and it, it acts as a payment system. The real key, though, is is that unlike... You know, some locations where you don't know for sure if someone's really checked in or not, um, or if someone's really buying something to take advantage of the offer, you have to pay. And as you pay, it just like it's the like the Starbucks loyalty card, which is not a location based. Um, it knows every time you've gone and paid with your card, and it gives you credit. And after every fifteen, you get a free cup of coffee. Level Up does something sim- gotcha. similar to that. Cool, cool. So, so uh, you know, with the location based like kind of point of purchase thing, that's a relatively uh, new trend, right? Do you see that kind of expanding? You know, much more much faster in the future? I think it will be an element of it. So there are companies like Shopkick, right, who, whom I didn't mention, and they're very much focused on trying to integrate um, scanning in-store and point of purchase so that they can actually demonstrate if they're giving things away of real value, you know, uh, gift cards, etc., that they know for a fact that people have actually been in the store and have scanned and purchased the thing. So um, I think there will be an element of it, you know, because there are different flavors of location. You touched on the loyalty piece. That's a key one. I think there's a relationship building or an engagement that can be loyalty, but it can also just be, you know, getting closer to your customers and finding out where their head is at, right? Um, But there'll also be this sort of mobile couponing that will work very similarly to the way a lot of traditional couponing works, except one, you'll know where people are, you know, Two, you can do better targeting of them. And three, you can make sure that um, you're not giving away something that you would have already, you know, if someone comes into the store, say CVS, and, you know, there's a candy bar or something that, you know, they were already going to come in and buy and you give them 50% off. It's like, well, yeah, they're surprised and delighted, but they were already going to buy the candy bar. You didn't need to give that away. So I think that... um, the more you, you can tightly tie in some of these elements to point of sale, the more the bigger retails re, retail stores will embrace this. Um, but I don't know as though it's going to be the end all be all. It just it will definitely add scale. It will add comfort, I think, to a lot of these customers. Right, right. Is is one of the stipulations though when when they do swipe that card, that's like checking them in and basically broadcasting to their you know social graph that hey, I I just checked in at CVS. Is that is that one of the stipulations uh, on most of these or? Uh, most of them haven't got there yet. You know, some of them are, like I said, Tasty Delight is doing it, and they try to give the end user the control. And I think that's probably always going to be the right approach, where right, right. where you can make it better. And this is one of the things we advocate in the book: is the more reasons you give for someone sharing their check-in with their Facebook or social, you know, other social networks, the better, right? And if you say, look, you get twenty-five points for checking in, or you get a twenty-five percent off. 
but you can level up and get additional offers or you get more points or whatever for sharing it with Facebook, sharing it with Twitter. That's where the real power is. But I think you've got to let the user choose how they want to do that and how they want to share versus just automatically assuming. And again, that can all be done at the user level. Um, but if you give them the right incentives, I think that people will absolutely want to do that. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. So, so another chapter in your, in your upcoming book here um, is talking about beyond, what, what happens beyond the check-in, what happens after that. So can you, can you dive a little bit into that, that concept? Sure. So, um, you know, in, in full disclosure, that was one of the chapters that Mike handled. So Mike is definitely more of the expert in the beyond the check-in than me. But, you know, I think there, there are a few different ways we took that. And that is, one, um, thinking about the benefit that geo-awareness adds to any kind of transaction business data, et cetera, right? So uh, one of the things we don't think about is, is that there's this location-based service that all of us have been using for, you know, three or four years on our phones called Google Maps. It's, it's one of the most used and one of the most effective. Um, sorry, my color just got a little funky on you. I'm not sure why we went green like that. But uh, anyway, uh, there we go. Um, I just I was geo that's, that's sort of trans blooper reel. Yeah, I was geo transporting myself to uh, a different place. But I think thinking about you know things like Google Places, right, that are um, geo necessary, but they're not necessarily relying on someone checking in, or you know some of this mobile ads, mobile couponing, where you're close by in proximity, but you're not necessarily checked into a place. So uh, one of the things Mike and I try to do is think through what were some of those services and then obviously there's the other element of what can you do once you know people have checked in can you add that into your loyalty program can you add that into your communications um, I was talking to another local Austin company the other day um, that uh, Digby that does some very cool mobile e-commerce and one of the things they're trying to think about is if you can get someone to check in on one of the apps that they've built one time, they can passively know whether you've been in a store or not. And that sounds a little bit creepy, but they don't do anything with the data and they don't personally identify you. What they can know and they can share with the, the company is they can say, look, we've got sort of a notification that says this person has been to the store. You don't do anything while they're there or you do, um, but you could send them an email you know, after the fact and then you can also start to look for patterns and say, could we do more with this? So you know, it's how do you think about that? How do you get more into this passive check-in mode? So it is a little clunky sometimes to ask people to check in. So can you get a little more regular, whether it's the point of sale swipe or whether it's the, you know, just like um, on a laptop, if you've got your Wi-Fi enabled so you can say, always connect me when I'm in my local Starbucks or coffee right, shop, right. always connect me at home, or ask me, right? And so I have a theory that someday with some of these services, you'll walk out of your door, uh, whether it's using your accelerometer or you'll have your house geofenced, it will trigger and say, hey, Aaron, you're leaving. Um, I know based on the time that you're probably going to work, I'm going to turn on your usual default, which says check you into work, check you into the gym, check you into the sandwich shop or whatever, unless you tell me otherwise. If it sees that I'm leaving and it's maybe 9 or 10 o'clock at night, it might say, whoa, you know, his privacy settings are sensitive to anything after 8 o'clock. Right, right. um, I'm going to default you into the only check-in proactively unless you tell me otherwise. And that way it gives me the control, but makes it a little bit easier. And I think, you know, stores will follow suit and make the, their geofencing or having a much tighter sort of loop in terms of where you can check in. Um, once they do that, then it will avoid, you know, if I'm walking down Boylston Street in Boston or Congress Street, South Congress Street in, in Austin, you know, if I walk by every store and it auto checks me in, I might check into 50 stores unknowingly right, right. unless they have this geofencing technology. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest things that, that I, I don't really use too many location-based services because I, I don't have the habit built into my day-to-day, -day, right? I have to like actively take out my phone, check into all these places, right? It really is a habit, but I think what you're talking about when it will actually be kind of, uh, hey, do you want to check in here? We noticed that you're here. I think that'll actually help uh, adoption a lot more and uh, kind of expand where this is going, right? Right, and give you something for it, right? And, and one of the things that I think smart people, smart retailers and, and companies will do is they'll start to create an experience so we walk in and they can not just give you discounts but maybe give you benefits like, oh, I noticed that you've been here before and when you go into the check, you know, the... Um, uh, the try uh, what, what do you call it the dressing room right to try on those pair of jeans that you like to share that with your Facebook uh, f friends and ask them what they think well we can do that because we know you're already here do you want to turn on that service and so they've got it so tightly geofenced that when you walk into the dressing room you know once you've hit the OK button because you know you don't want to be 
too voyeuristic, right, or, or right. showing things they shouldn't be shown. But it can make life easier for you. And I think the more they can add value to your life, the more inclined people will be to do these kinds of things. Right, right. Cool. So, so with these services, is it, you know, with, with location-based services, is it just for, uh, you know, brick-and-mortar places with a lot of different um, locations with a lot of foot traffic? Or can other, you know, uh, single locations or, or lower foot traffic areas and businesses use this? Yeah, no. So that's a great question, and I think if you look at uh, com- uh, companies like Bravo TV, um, companies that are not, you know, they're either uh, publications or they're consumer packaged goods. There are things that you can do, whether they're educational, they could be partnerships with the actual retail locations. Um, you can do things that are taking advantage of events or maybe things that are in certain cities, maybe around holidays, etc. But if you look at what some of the companies like, you know, Bravo, uh, like Red Bull has done, like Pepsi has done, like Coke has done, um, they're being smart about how they do it. So they might go in and tag locations where they know people are buying their product or Bravo or History Channel. History Channel is being smart because they're saying, look, say you check into you know, the Statue of Liberty, um, this is where so-and-so took place and this is where blah, 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 and you can go and see this particular episode. So it gives you historical facts, which are you know fairly interesting. Um, my partner in crime, which I mentioned before, Schneider Mike, his agency has gone in and set up an Allen and Garretson uh, uh, page on Foursquare. So now that if you are following them and you check into any Barnes and Noble uh, to buy the the book, uh, it will pop up and say, "Hey, while you're here, you should check out you know Aaron and Mike's book, Location Based Marketing for Dummies." So even though Alan Garretson has a physical location, uh, they're not going to have people regularly checking in there. But if they have people checking in um, that are friends of theirs, you know, it reminds them to buy the book when they're in all the different Barnes and Nobles. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool, cool. So, so one of the big things about location-based, you know, services is actually, you know, measuring the effectiveness. You know, all that foot traffic coming in is it from the service? Is it from your campaign? What are some tips that you can give to, you know, capture as much data as possible and really like prove the the validity of, you know, this medium? Yeah, so um, a lot of the platforms offer their own dashboards if you've gone in and claimed your location. So if you go to Foursquare and claim your location, if you go to Yelp and claim your location, um, you you get a dashboard that gives you a fairly rich set of data that talks about who's checked in, what are the demographics, time of day, all that good stuff. So that can be helpful in terms of watching, you know, peaks, spikes, uh, what the mix is, what the check-in times are, how your offer uptake is done, things like that. Particularly for bigger stores, if you want to manage multiple locations, multiple services, there are tools like Moment Feed. Uh, that's a good one. That helps you manage across multiple locations and multiple services. Uh, there are two others, one called GeoToco and one called ValueVine. So GeoToco uh, also allows you to sort of manage multiple offers. Uh, there's this new service, which I mentioned, Local Response, which allows you to mine Twitter and, and take explicit and inferred check-ins and actually present offers to them. So um, this is one of the things that Mike and I talk a lot about in the book as well. So And this, this is a space that will continue to evolve. Uh, I'm sorry, I just froze on you there for a second. I looked like I was falling asleep. Um, one of the things that we do have is we have a website. Uh, it's locationbasedmarketingfordummies.com, all spelled out. And that's going to be the book site, and you know we're going to keep a regular blog there. Um, You'll be able to find out about some of these services as they evolve because Mike and I will keep wiki pages that we'll let users contribute as well to that talk about all these different services that can help measure and monitor. Right, right. And that, that was actually one of my questions, the third-party tools that you would recommend because, you know, they're, they're all in different places, the dashboards in different places, but those three services sound like it's a way to kind of streamline all this stuff. So, cool. Yeah, they definitely, I mean, like I said, Moment Feed, GeoToco, and ValueVine, all good services, all smart, savvy people. I, I have the luxury of knowing the three CEOs that run the, the companies, very responsive guys, uh, very interested in location, seeing it succeed. And um, what I'll say is, you know, if you check their service out and you don't see something you like and you have a need, talk to them, right? Because they're constantly adjusting their product roadmap. And if there's something that you as a business wants to do and they see a value in it, then I think they would absolutely consider adding it to their product roadmap. Cool. cool. Awesome. So so where do you keep up to date? Uh, you personally keep up to date with all this location-based stuff because it's constantly changing, constantly evolving. What, what resources would you point people to? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously we have a selfish reason to say pay attention to Mike and me. Um, right. 
There's a Twitter feed, Mr. Underscore LBS, which is helpful. Uh, Asif Khan, who runs the Location-Based Marketing Association, uh, he does a nice job. You know, you can pay attention to the locate. It's LB uh, Location Base M A dot org. Um, so they're a good resource. And then you know, pay attention to the different providers like the Gowala, the Foursquare sites, uh, their Twitter handles, their blogs. Um, there's a woman named Jen Van Grove. She's at Jen Bruin or at, at J Bruin on uh, Twitter. She writes for Mashable. She does a lot of coverage of the location-based space. Uh, and then there are people like Kunar Patel, who is one of the uh, writers for Ad Age. Uh, Kunar does a nice job as well, focusing on location-based as well as other social media tools and services. So that's some of the places that we try to keep an eye on. Um, I have a list that I've actually built. If you know someone checks out my Twitter handle, at Aaron Strout, you can see my LBS Twitter stream that I've got. Uh, so I have a lot of sort of the big brains in the space, and, and some of the ones that I just mentioned are already tagged on there awesome awesome cool so so for the people out there listening and watching you know what would be the one takeaway what would be the one thing if they're trying to dip their toe into location-based marketing you know where would you point them to I would say get set up on Foursquare I have a friend uh, and colleague Brian uh, Reed that just did this on vacation a couple weeks ago and we actually did a a blog post on my company blog blog blog.wcgworld.com and what he talked about was how much fun it was to sort of test it out now I know you asked about businesses specifically try it out as a consumer and check into some places and get some ideas and then get your company set up you know get your claim your location think about maybe a light offer that you could do there are absolutely things that you can do without giving away the farm you know maybe the the thing that you do give away is you do a coffee on Friday mornings with coffee and donuts and get to meet the offer the get to meet the owner right um, so there are things that you could spend 20 bucks on that aren't gonna take the shirt off your back but I think experimenting with them and see what works right and if you like that maybe try another service or two out try out Yelp uh, Facebook is good for bigger companies. Um, it's the gamification element is not there as much, and so it's not quite as much fun. Um, but you know they have a service as well. But try a couple of them out and see what the reactions are. You know, and and try reaching out to some of the folks that are checking in. And I think a lot of companies will see some value to that. Awesome, awesome, cool. So, so where can people find you online, Aaron? Uh, so I try to be fairly straightforward uh, at Aaron Stroud on Twitter uh, I have been doing a lot of my blogging on my company blog with some of my other smart colleagues I mentioned that blog WCG world uh, as in like the planet earth world dot com um, you mentioned my blog dot com blog uh, I mentioned the location based marketing for dummies uh, we do the quick and dirty podcast uh, if you just look under a Twitter um, at quick n so not and but n dirty uh, we do that regularly on Thursdays and we talk a lot about location based services as well my co-host uh, Kyle Flaherty and I so I think those are some pretty good places to check me out Instagram is always a fun place if you like photos uh, I spend a lot of time taking pictures over there so nice nice awesome well I appreciate your time and coming on the show and sharing all this awesome knowledge on the location based marketing industry and where it's headed um, I think uh, I, I personally took away a lot of stuff from this interview and I hope our audience did as well and I want to get you back someday on the show. Perfect. Well, I love it and thank you for taking the time to have me on. I love HubSpot and uh, it's been a pleasure doing this. Awesome, awesome. Cool. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks, David.